Hey everyone and welcome to in this video I'm going to talk about all baseball games on the GBA and I really hope these are all of them because it was a lot to review. So the first one All Stars Baseball 2003 is great and for a GBA game it has depth. Every pitcher has a variety of pitches, stamina and strength. The batting mechanics are easy once you get used to them and even there there is enough depth for a GBA game. Also the game packs a lot in game modes. You get exhibition matches, all-stars matches, a home run derby, seasons and world series. There are trading cards to collect. The difficulty settings makes it a great pick for both casual and hardcore players. The game is amazing. The only flaw I can call is that the CPU players aren't the brightest. But considering that you're playing on a GBA, it's excusable. So overall the game is great. All-Stars Baseball 2004 is again amazing. It has again all 30 major league teams, the same amount of game modes and over 800 players. Again with different stats. You can again trade players, do transfers. The difference between last year's games and this one is that CPU pitchers can now throw outside of strike zones and that the speed of base runners has been increased to the point that doubles or even triples are possible. Also the graphics and the audio are better than last year's games. So if you were to choose between the two, choose 2004. But if your only option is 2003, just know that 2003 is just as amazing as 2004, even if 2004 is better due to the improvements. Also I forgot to mention that both games have local multiplayer. All in all, I recommend you both games, they're amazing. Backyard Baseball is a great game for kids because it's super easy to pick up. Content wise the game has 30 teams and the following game modes. Quick game, home run derby, single game, season play and multiplayer. The difficulty settings are made for kids so no hardcore gamer or simulation lover should play this game. The difficulty ranges from one directing players on the field to actually playing the game. And even then the game is super easy. Or if you want it even easier, then you can always put the game to play itself. So that's about it. it. It's super easy to play, easy to pick up, making it a really great game for kids with cute visuals and a nice amount of content. But if you're a hardcore gamer and want to feel a challenge, this game is not for you. Baseball Advance is a game made specifically for the GBA. It's not a port. And even if you would expect a game made specifically for the console to be the greatest ever, it's actually the opposite. Right from the start you notice that the game doesn't have that many game modes. There is exhibition, season, playoff and all-star. There's no batting practice, no home run derby and no multiplayer. But at least the gameplay itself is great. The batting and pitching mechanics are a mixture of game mechanics seen in other baseball games and the gameplay is intuitive. Also, even if the mechanics are intuitive, the game has depth, as players have different stats. Like for example, this circle here can be smaller or larger depending on the player's stats. The graphics are good, but the lack of game modes takes a toll on the overall game. It's good in gameplay mechanics and graphics, but lacks a big chunk of content. The game modes. Crushed Baseball is over the top. It doesn't try to be a simulation, it doesn't even have real players in its roster. Instead, it tries to be extreme baseball. What makes Crushed Baseball so unique is that by pressing the L button, you can give the players in the game the ability to throw trick pitches, make superhuman catches, kick in a boost of speed, or hit the ball so hard that it flies over the fence or knocks down anyone who tries to field it. Each pitcher has a selection of 4 different trick pitches and position players have 3. For example you can activate an ability when you bat, then another when you run. To activate an ability you just have to fill your mojo meter by playing the game. And when you activate an ability it's beautiful, the animations are fluid. As for gameplay, when you don't use the abilities, the controls are intuitive and work great. So there's a pretty good baseball game outside of the ability system. Also the AI is better than in All-Stars. Content wise you get 10 stadiums and each one looks unique. It's not like in other games that the number doesn't really matter because they all have the same grass or the same structure and just some minor details are changed. No, in Crushed Baseball the different stadiums are really different. 
but unfortunately this game too, just like Baseball Advance, has only 4 game modes, Exhibition, Practice, 2 player and League play. But considering how much depth you get in the gameplay, the abilities, the different stadiums, Baseball Advance had only 4 stadiums, this one has 10. And different looking stadiums, not different stadiums just by their name and some minor details are changed, no, stadiums here are really different. So overall Crushed Baseball is a great game for anyone seeking an over the top baseball game on the GBA. You know, the type of baseball with superpowers. Field of 9 Digital Edition 2001 is a strategy game. You still play baseball but by choosing cards. You choose where players should stand and what players should go against what opponent cards. It's still baseball in a way, but from another perspective. You get 12 teams in the game, but since there are only 4 game modes, the game will become dull pretty fast. I mean sure, playing baseball via trading cards is interesting at first, but it soon becomes rinse and repeat without some proper game modes. As for difficulty, it's nicely balanced. Easy is ok and hard is hard, but as I said, as a trading card game playing baseball becomes dull pretty fast. High Heat Major League Baseball 2002 is good, but it still has a lot to improve. For example you can't do transfer, the stats seem to be irrelevant because players feel like they all play the same, the easy difficulty is still pretty tough which means that the game won't appeal to casual players, there is no local multiplayer option and the soundtrack is also pretty bad. But the good part is that aside of that, it's a solid game of GBA baseball. The baseball mechanics are good, but too bad that content wise the game is lacking. High Heat Major League Baseball 2003 is a shameful effort. It's the same game as last year but with an updated roster and the inclusion of link cable multiplayer. Sure, the gameplay is still solid, but without the missing stuff I listed in the previous game, plus the fact that every stadium looks the same, even if you get different ones, makes it lose big time in front of the competition that has great gameplay and great content. Here you get only great gameplay, which means that you have no reason to get this game since the competition does a better job. And even when they rebranded the franchise, they still kept the same tradition. MLB Slugfest 2004 has the same problems as its predecessors. It lacks content. There's no home run derby, no all-star matches, you still don't get stats. Also, as its title suggests, it feels slug-ish. It's sluggish. The action is slow and without content you don't have any reason to get this game if there are so many other good GBA baseball games. And the last one, Major League Baseball 2K7, after having a few years of break to prepare for the big release, changes nothing. It's still low on content and dull in gameplay, concluding that no Major League Baseball game on GBA is worth your time. The franchise might be something on other platforms, but on GBA it just uses the name for some cash grab. And you can clearly tell that it's a cash grab because from 2002 to 2005, in 5 years, they haven't improved the game, they didn't put effort to make it better because they knew people will buy the game thinking that they will get a portable version of the good MLB. The MLB you get on other platforms. Instead, they get fooled. One Piece Going Baseball is a pretty good game if you like baseball and One Piece. It's not revolutionary but it's fun. You get a story mode with cutscenes, in the story mode you play a season. You also get the classic exhibition and even mini games. The baseball mechanics are like in other baseball games for GBA so considering what it has, a story, uniquely animated characters and unique characters from the anime, in a normal baseball game for GBA, the game is pretty good. I mean you can't really revolutionize the gameplay that much considering the limitations of the hardware, anyway just know that it's a great baseball game and if you're a One Piece fan you should definitely check it out. Power Procon Pocket 1 and 2 might look cute, but are actually quite tough. The AI has many tricks up its sleeve and shuffles them so that you can really predict the ball when batting. The controls are ok, so the toughness of the game comes from not knowing where the ball is going to land, not because of the game mechanics, which are good by the way. The two games have a story each, 
You can do transfers, create your own players and upgrade them. There are also mini games. The games are amazing if you know Japanese. Power Procon Pocket 3 has the same gameplay and game formula, but what everyone loved about it was the story. It was denser and funnier than in all of the trilogy. I won't tell you much, but your main character is a cyborg and someone gets run over by a car. There are more mini games to unlock than in the first games, and even if all of the gameplay is the same, it's definitely worth playing. Power Procon Pocket 4 has a new story. This is the biggest selling point for the franchise, by the way, the story. I mean, the baseball part is good too, but when you get to experience the story, it's something else. Also, the gameplay formula is great too. I mean, you can create your own players, play minigames, the baseball itself is really good. An improvement in 4 is that you can create more players. And this is valid for the other games too, 5, 6 and 7. People enjoyed it more as an RPG than for the fact that it's a baseball game. The many minigames, especially the stories in each game, made it a success. Also in Power Pro 5, the difficulty has been reduced. 6 and 7 have the same difficulty as the other ones, so they are more tough. Only 5 is easier, so if you seek a slightly easier Power Pro Kun game, try the fifth one. But you should try out all of them, because all of them are amazing. Backyard Baseball 2006 is again accessible and geared towards kids. This time though the game is a little more challenging, still nothing to worry about and nothing to be happy about if you're a hardcore gamer. In Rust, the game is pretty much the same as the other one. Sure, the content is different, but the experience will be the same. And same goes for Backyard Baseball 2007. Also, a minor detail I forgot to tell you about the three backyard baseball games is that you can create players and that you can use power-ups, but power-ups have such a low impact on the overall gameplay that you won't feel any difference. Still, the three games are great for any casual gamer. Power Poke Dash is more like a slot machine game, it's not really a baseball game. You select the options from the left, select some more options from a pop-up and then see what luck entails for you. The game has a story of the same caliber as the rest, but without the good baseball gameplay from earlier, it loses its charm. Sure, the story was the biggest selling point of the franchise, but the great story works only when combined with the great gameplay. Solid baseball mechanics. And those aren't present here, so this one is a downer. Play it only if you've played the other games and really want to see another story, because gameplay wise, it's pretty weak. Best Play Pro Yakio is okay-ish, gameplay wise, but these sprites are so tiny it's hard to play the game for long periods of time or to play the game when on a bumpy car ride. It's nice that the game lets you edit players, that way you can always update rosters, making the game up to date forever if you wanted to. As for the gameplay mechanics, they are okay at best. I can't praise them, I can't really call them bad, but I still don't have them at heart. That's why I'm seeing that they are okay at best. Famista Advance is a super accessible baseball GBA game. It's easy to pick up, you don't even have to know Japanese to understand what you have on screen. But being easy to pick up, it's only geared towards casual players. As even if you turn the difficulty to 20, Hardcore players will find it hard to get challenged by the game. Also because the game modes are bare minimum, the game will become dull if you play it for too long. I mean, it's good for some quick minutes of fun, but you won't be playing it for hours. Which is good or bad depending on how much you want to play it. If you just want to have some quick fun and feel great, this game will work out for you. But if you want to struggle and get challenged, this game is not for you. Anyway. The game has great visuals, it's intuitive and very casual, I liked it personally. Mobile Puroyagu Kontaku no Saihai, or the game you see on screen, impresses visually but not functionally. It's amazing how many different stadiums it has and the graphics look good, but the pictures use the scene through, which you'll quickly learn how to exploit and land a hit every time. And even if you can edit players and do transfers, there are still many players you can't trade or edit. Overall, the game is pretty bad balanced. It's okay, but there are way better games out there. Kachinko Professional Baseball is okay, but only okay. 
The gameplay might seem hard at first, but once you learn that you have to listen to the commentary and read the data of each pitcher before the throw, you quickly learn that you can land a hit every time. That's about the trick with the game. In Rust, the game is just okay. You can also trade players in the game, but I found it pretty dull actually. Greatest 9 is the most realistic GBA baseball game I've seen. It has real players, which Japanese reviewers seem to be excited about, the controls are great once you get used to them, also the AI shuffles its tricks. The CPU doesn't always throw the ball in the same way, which makes the game great, it's more challenging. The AI has surprises, which makes the game more real. Players have stats, you can do transfers, the only complaint I've read about the game was that even if you set the game to the hardest difficulty, at some point the difficulty dips, you score some big points and then returns to being hard again. Anyway, the game is top class in GBA sports games. And it's a definite recommendation. Let's make a professional baseball team advance or Puryago Chimu Otsukuru Adobansu is a baseball manager game. The game has some real players in it, but you can also create players. You draft players, hire a coach, train players, manage injuries. The game plays like every manager game, but being old and on a GBA, don't expect too many options. It's a little dumbed down, but still, you can do transfers, you see how the match is going via text prompts. If you're into this type of games, you're going to enjoy it for sure. Japanese reviewers say it's good but not brilliant. Mezase Koshien is a baseball RPG. You name your high school, train, train a lot as for the most part there are training minigames and participate in matches. It's pretty disappointing, I mean the only customization you can do in an RPG game is to choose the name of your school. You can't customize any character, you can't create any player, the story is decent but the gameplay is seriously lacking and is boring. Pitchers don't even have a ball type, ball speed or control, they just throw the ball to you. Also the AI performance is sloppy. Overall, the game has more downsides than good sides. I don't recommend the game to you. Ok, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You would help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and there will be thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.